Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So into this particular video, we'll be solving three or four most common SQL interview questions. So these questions are based on some of the medium and advanced level concepts. So you can find the details of all these questions into the description box of this particular video. If you'll find this video helpful, so don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't. So let us quickly move to our screen and start solving the problems. Hello everyone so let us start solving the very first problem into this particular video so on your screen you can see write a query to identify returning active users now who, uh, who is a returning active users and how do we identify them so into the second line you can see we have given the definition of the returning active user so returning active user is a user who has made a second purchase within seven days of any of their purchases so let's say if i am a uh, buying something on any of the online shopping websites and i'm purchasing something into the seven days only of my purchase and i'm purchasing anything then i'll be a returning active users and that is the information which is being asked to be retrieved from this particular data set or this particular problem so how should we go about solving uh, this particular question so the logic here would be something like we have the information we have the order id we have the user who have purchased that particular order we have the order date and the sale amount but we are only concerned with identifying the users who have been purchasing within seven day of any of their purchases so there is a function in sql through which we can get to know the difference between two dates and that is the date diff function but how do we go and solve this particular problem so the logic which i'll be applying will be something like i have this particular data set i'll be joining this table with itself and i'll be applying two conditions so what will be the two conditions which i'll be applying so the number of first condition is the user id information should match so basically i want to get the details of two orders so let's say we have a particular user and we have the information of order one and order two so how do we know if, uh, if this particular order one and order two were purchased into within seven days so definitely i'll have the date of purchase of order one similarly date of purchase of order two and the difference between these two particular dates if it is seven or less than seven definitely this particular user is a returning active user for me that is that is what is defined into this particular problem so i'll be joining this particular table with itself and on to basis of two columns so the number one column will be i'll be using the user id column to join because i want to get the information the orders which have been done by the same user so the user id should match the second number or the second number of joining condition which should be something like the difference between the order date should be less than or equal to seven then only we can count that particular user as a returning active user so let's go back to a sql server management studio where i imported the same data set here i'll execute this code so you can see we have executed it let us import the same data set which we were having and that i'll do a select start from table four Let's execute this so you can see we have got the information. So what I'll be doing will be something like I'll only get the information of the user ID from table four. A what should I do? Should I do a inner join or should I do a outer or a right join? Let us do one thing. Let us do uh, either join and i'll do either join of table for b on so to which condition so the condition is something like a dot user id is equal to b dot user id so this is the information which have been satisfied so the second infer or the second condition which should be satisfied should like should look like something and the date difference 
which should be day between the starting date starting date i'll just give a dot order it and the ending date should be less than eight just put here a uh, distinct so all the three users according to this particular logic is a potential returning customer because some of their orders have a order date of less than eight let us quickly verify whether it is like that so this on the basis of the user id i'll just check if the shopping has been done within seven days or not and you can see both of these orders order number s2 and order number s6 for user id s2 has been done within seven days so definitely order user id 2 is a potential returning customer similarly for user id s1 these two orders 4 and 7 have been done within the seven days duration let us come to three and for user id s3 you can see the order date is lying between so almost all the orders are lying between the seven days so friends definitely user id 1 2 and 3 all of them are potential returning customer pretty much a very happening e-commerce website but coming to the problem this is how we have solved this particular problem so the logic was something where we have used the information the user id should match where we should get the information of each of the users and the difference between the orders should be seven or less than seven so for instance this was the very first problem the problem says write a sql query to reformat the table such that there is a department id column and a revenue id revenue column for each month so friends we have this input table here where we have into the very first column we have the id uh, into the second column this must be the department id and the revenue which the department has generated and into which month the revenue has been generated we have all of these information which are present here and the result table should look something like this where all of these months should be distributed into the separate columns you can see the jan month uh, information we have into the jan revenue similarly feb month information we have the into the feb revenue for each of the department ids now what is the logic we should be applying here oh, i have made a video on the case when statement and how do we use the aggregate functions within a case when statement so if you haven't checked out that particular video you can definitely check that video into the description box i have provided the link to the same now i'll be using uh, that concept only That's why i did mention about uh, that video so what should be the logic to solve this particular problem now this is pretty much advanced level problem and these kind of problems you can the variety of problems you can expect into the real interviews because using the case when statement with the aggregate function is a very you know kind of uh, important tool when we are solving uh, some medium or advanced level sql problem so what should be the logic behind solving this particular problem so i'll be applying a particular logic now I'll do one thing. I'll sort this basis the ID. So I'll present the information for all the department ID separately. So one is there, two is there, three is there. So this is the information we have for department ID as one. This is the information we have for the department ID as two. Similarly, we have the information of the department ID as three. So friends, basically these you can treat as separate groups 
and into these particular groups we have want to have a single row for each group and all these months should redistribute into form of the columns jan feb march likewise for all the other uh, months we should get the information and for jan uh, the information is something like 8000 department id 2 for jan month the revenue is 9k for department id is 3 uh, for jan month is no revenue so this should come as null. now how should we solve this particular problem the input is there the output is there what should be the logic to solve this particular problem so the problem uh, should be solved something like so we need to rearrange this particular month column into the separate columns for each of the month so here comes the use of the case when statement into the aggregate function let us go back to a sql server management studio where we have imported the same data set and let us execute this code let us import the data set here i'll do a select star from table 5 that's it uh, we have got the information now what is the logic which should be applying so the logic which we should be applying should be something like id and we should do case when the month is equal to n then just get the information so select start from table 5 So case when month is equal to January, then something, then what? The first of all, let us do one thing. Let us write for each of the month, the 12 months. I'll copy paste this. So Feb, March. So fortunately, we don't have information for all the months. So let us just remove all these rows not required. So i'll be using the case when statement so case when month is equal to jan then into the output we have should have a revenue so i'll just write the same for every other month now how do we calculate this particular revenue so the revenue can be any let us rename the column as well so jan revenue web revenue march revenue so these are separate columns and i'll put this into the bracket and i'll be applying a particular function which you might be knowing and which is the max function now i'll be coming back to this why i'm applying the max function and i'll help you explain this into the excel sheet before that let me complete this query okay this should come outside Let us execute this code. So the order of sequence for group by is after form. Should write it. So you can see we have got the correct information where we have assembled all the row level information for each of the month into the separate columns. Now friends, what is the logic behind solving this particular problem and why did I use the max and what exactly this thing 
does so i have explained it a lot of more detail into my case win statement with aggregates but i'll give a summary don't worry so what exactly is happening is you can see i have the id and i'm grouping my under the basis of the id so you can see i've created separate groups for all the ids now the case when statement which i applied here so it will go and check so case when month is equal to jan then revenue end and the maximum amount from the aggregate which have been created now if this query would come into this row or into this particular aggregate how will this work it will be something like it will first of all go and check for month so is the month january or not so is the, if the month is january it will put yes no no so okay the month is january so it will again filter out this information side into the side and then it will apply so whatever number of rows i'll be having it will apply the aggregate function which i've given here which is the max onto the group so you can see you can see at the last i'm using the group by function and i'm grouping onto the basis of the id column so i'll just be using the max function and i'll be getting the maximum revenue which will be present so fortunately we just have one row so we are getting the eight thousand and that is how we have got the eight thousand now coming to the second and we have renamed this as january revenue coming to the second query so case when month is equal to february then revenue end as february month so it will again go and check into all the separate groups which we have created so you can see it is grouping by under the basis of the id column so this is the id so so sequentially it will do the same operation which i am explaining for the group id as one sequentially it will be doing the same operation for all the groups so first of all this will go into the group one the same query like the second one for february revenue it will go into the same group it will first of all go and check whether the month is feb or not so this is no this is why this is no now after getting the information of wherever the condition is true it will filter out it will put it separately and then apply the max function max aggregate function into the filter so after filtering out all the necessary information using the case when statement it will choose the max from the revenue column so it's working right here so friends this is how we have solved this particular interesting problem more problems on this or want to get more information into a deep way you can check my separate video onto the case when statement as well as the case when with aggregates and case when with joins uh, definitely you can check out uh, those videos as well and don't forget to like them and also i have explained multiple advanced level concepts into my advanced sql playlist better check them also question says write a sql query to report the latest login for all the users in the year 2020 do not include the users who did not log in into 2020 so this is a pretty much easy level problem you can say so into the first column i have the user id and in the second column i have the timestamp so basically i want to get the information of the the latest login for all the users in the year 2020 so we are only concerned with the information present into this particular table for the year 2020 so first of all we'll be filtering out the relevant information for the year 2020 and then we will try to get the latest login for all the users who have logged in in the the year 2020 so as usual i've imported the same data set into my sql server management studio i'll just execute this or i've I have executed i think so i'll just do a select start from table six so you can see we have got the user id and we have got the timestamp now what do we need to do here so first of all i am only concerned with the information of the year 2020 so I'll just write here. Let us execute this code so you can see using year from timestamp we can get the year from all 
of those rows so i'll just put this into my condition that's it i'll execute this code so we have got all the information of the users who have logged into the year 2020s i'll use the row number function i'll be ranking onto the basis of the timestamp but first i'll partition because i want to get the information for all the users so i'll just try it here user id and order by i'll just write here time stamp which should be descending because i want to get the latest login that's it let us execute this code and you can see we have got the latest login information for all the users but before that i also want to filter out the information where the rank is equal to one because one means we have the latest information of the log ins where rank is equal to one i'll execute this code and you can see we have got the relevant information here so friends this is how we have solved this particular problem if you've enjoyed watching this particular video if you like this particular video don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't till then keep learning sql and don't stop watching my advanced sql playlist and the sql interview problems playlist as well so meet in the next video thank you so much bye